So I'm uh, talking about learn of fusion theory and practice. I know that sounds like a lot of words, so let's unpack this a bit. So we'll just cover the basics, the essential components of the linear dialect and ops. A lot in the audience already know, but just to set the stage for everyone. And uh, otherwise, I lose half the audience by the next slide. Uh, then we'll talk about op fusion in general and why it's important. Then what does it mean in the context of Linal? And then most importantly, for ML kernels, what does it mean? What, what, does, what is great about Linal fusion? What's lacking? What's the future work? First thing first, a uh, big thank you to, for all the people who have been contributing to upstream Linalj and uh, Fusion. Without this, this kind of present, without their contribution, this kind of presentations wouldn't be possible, really. So, let's jump in. So, so the Linalj is or linear algebra is the core abstraction when luring from ML graphs from frameworks to the MLR ecosystem. So. At that stage, you will now have not just the Linal ops, but also math, array, ops. Uh, if you have a loop, a structure, SCF loop that we saw previously. And these carry the structure and the computation, while the tensor member F carry the payload or the data and operations such as broadcast that happen on the uh, data. Now, if you wonder about this uh, Linal, genesis of these things and in the beginning how things uh, were, uh, how this dialects came about. A good slide is this thoughts on tensor code generation in MLR 2020. So this in early days uh, by Chris Lattner. Uh, go and have a look, find it on the internet. So let's jump next in. Uh, Linal Ops. Uh, machine learning is, we say, uh, it's a lot about machine multiplication. So let's have a look at linal.matmal. It's a named op. Uh, a named op means like the semantics is carried by the name itself. You could have a lot of named ops and they will have their semantics. Now that's not really a good thing because what happens when you try to do lowering or transformation? What is a common abstraction? Linal solves this problem by having this requirement that all named ops really are under the whole Linal gen generic, what is called Linal generic. And I'll spend some time on this slide so that it's like everybody understands and it sets the context for the next uh, set of discussions. So li Linal generic is, you may have heard this before, is a structured op. What it means is a structured data, tensor, member F, plus structured iterator. In the case of Linar Generic, it's really an implicitly perfectly nested loop. These working together as a coherent unit. What I mean here is, so in this case of a matrix multiplication, you can see here that it's, a, as you know, it's a three level nested loop. Uh, the first two are parallel and then there's a reduction. Let's call the loop iterators i, j, k. You can give any name, it's just the map, the symbolic name. Now, the affine map is really a mapping from the iteration space, so every point here is an iteration point, to the data space. So if we, for matrix multiply, we know like, you know, for the C, the output, is A, I, J, I, J, K mapping to I, J. So <coughs> here you can see it's invariant to K, so they access the same. So that, so now, so you have these index maps, you need three of them because they A, or for all the ins and outs, so A, B, and C. And you have this three mapping here. I don't know if they, oh yeah, the mouse is visible. And what it does really, the body of the Linal generic is like for each of these iteration points, right? The indexes and the, in, the mapping, so the iterators, Iterator to the, the map tells you the index for each of these A, B, C, all, all the ins and outs. And those form the arguments to the basic block, so the block arguments. And then the code inside the basic block is scalar code. So in the case of matrix multiply, you do a multiply and add. I want to say a bit more about the outs because to me they are serving three roles. First, is it's giving the output shape so for example, if you have a broadcast, the, 
amount of broadcast is not apparent from the ins. It's not apparent from the yield, but it's the shape of the output. The second is the initial value. Suppose you're doing a reduction, a max, or a summation. You, you have a, you need a starting point, a zero or a one, depending on you doing add or multiply. That's, you get it from the outs. That's, in that case, it serves a, uh, the purpose of an init. And the third one is, a, is for bufferization, the destination passing. You specify, you give it a kind of hint, like which I think Matthias was talking this morning about, where it tells you in the bufferization where it could actually write the output. So with that said, let's, uh, just one more on this one is like, okay, as I said, like linear generic is an implicitly nested loop, and if you lower it, so you can general, uh, so to gen generalize one, you just say MLI ROP, linear generalize, and you get the generalized version of the named op. And if you lower it to loops, you can really see the, the three level nested loops and the operations, right? And another very interesting, I think, set of slides is from Albert Cohen, structured ops in MLIR. Uh, go look it up on the internet, it's, it's very nice. Gives you the, in the beginning, kind of uh, what, how these things came about. Uh, quick one on this one, I like this one, it's from Stella. Uh, it's um, called Linal Op DSL. It's a Python based DSL for authoring Linal uh, Op definition. So, this is example for the MATML. And so, as you can see here, Linal struct, mat, def MATML. It is inspired by this paper, Tensor Comprehension by Nicholas and others. Alex is here in the audience. So, and it uses a notation which is inspired, what they say is from the Einstein, Einstein's summation. All it really uh, means for our case here is like, you know, you see this variable k, that's not on the left-hand side, and so that's sort of a free variable, and therefore it infers that it's a reduction. These sizes, et cetera, they are inferred from the shapes of the data, so that's how structured ops working as a coherent unit. What I show below is just a bunch of named ops. You can see there's lots of them there. Right, so with that context, okay, so linear generic, linear ops, etc. Let's jump into fusion. So operator fusion or kernel fusion, and we said linear ops are implicitly perfectly nested loops. So it really boils down to being loop fusion. And firstly, like, why is it important? Uh, so what happens when you lower from the ML graph from frameworks or anywhere, you get a series of linal ops. And if you were just to lower them straight away without fusion, it would write to memory, and you have like first level, second level, like local memory, shared memory, main memory, and that would totally slow down the application. So as we all know, we try to fuse it, bring the producer and consumer together. Or in compile language, you say like reduce a reuse distance. Yeah. Another way to say is like eliminate materialization of intermediate results. Uh, there are, I have examples on this one, so I won't go there. But then, okay, that's good. Should we do as much fusion as possible? What about the trade offs? Uh, Recomputation, increasing vector register pressure. As, as you fuse more things, your, your kernel becomes. The, larger, and so you have trade-offs there. Okay, so that's set the stage. Now let's look at some small examples and build up to us something more. So here what you show on the blue is, the, it's doing a computation x times x. So the, it's, uh, x is a tensor, it comes in, and it's just uh, the first blue one does x square, x writes the result to percentage zero. And the second one, the green box, is another linear generic that does x, it takes the result and adds tensor y to it. And if you're playing around, then say, okay, MLIR opt minus test linear element wise fusion, etc. And then you, from the left, you can generate the y. And the, on the right hand side, you can see that it's fused the two, multiply and add together. Okay. What about this case? So here it's a bit more complicated, a little bit. Uh, so here, what happens, you have a multiplier where it's doing an x square. And then you have another multiplication where it's doing uh, x plus y. Now, without fusion, what would happen is you would have two scans of x, first for the first multiplication and then 
another scan of x for the second multiplication. If we were to fuse just a multiplication together, we would do away with the scan of x, two scans of x, but then you will be writing out the results, and then in the second linear, the final one, the add, we will be reading it back. What if we did a fusion of this multiply and add? Well, we would do away with some of the stores and loads from memory, but then not. So it seems like, oh, well, it's, it's really great to just fuse everything together. And to be honest, sometimes that's, that's OK, because you, there are other limitations. You may not be able to fuse as much as you want to. But for this example, let's see how you go about it. So I tried to show a different approach, and this is using Alex's uh, transform dialect transformations ops, call it. So uh, this, this part is a bit tutorial-ish. So, anyway. so tr transform structured match. So it's trying. So here on the top right, you see the same thing that you saw in the previous slide. So these ops, I've just truncated them as an example. And here it's saying, okay, match element-wise binary. So it's going to match all three. And so we split handle match. So it, we just name them similar so that you can see the correspondence. So we have these three, three ones here, x, 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 y, plus. And then it say, okay, tile and fuse, et cetera. And we end up, I like this one, that debug emit remark, because then you can, it prints what it has matched in case if you have a lot of transform dialect. Ops and you don't know what it's how what what is matching etc. So you have this uh, more fused loop. And is that all? Okay, well there's more to it than just when you you have ML graph you have not just linear generic ops you would have things like broadcast and stuff. So here what's happening is op zero is producing something that's one D, but op one needs something that views it as a two D. So it's uh, it does. The originally it's an expand ship. You can fool this so that instead of op one, it's an op one prime, which is okay, consuming. Yeah, so it's a, so in the first case it was like op zero produces something and op one, and then this expand ship just for the case of op one. We do the reverse, we, we do the expansion later so that you now op zero and op one are brought together and they can be fused. Is there another flavor like, you know, you have a fill and you're doing the fill into a vector just because op one C wants a vector of uh, the same values uh, as a vector, but you do a fold and you, 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 it can change the IR so that it just consumes the constant straight away. So what's the point of all this? You have a lot of these kind of uh, optimizations already there, patterns there. So another one is like, you know, uh, here, I've listed a few indexed consumer producers. You have a producer and consumer, and they seem to be consuming something, but actually they're just trying to get, generate the indices. And through optimization, you can remove those things. And then say, okay, I'm going to write a compiler, my payful compiler, and okay, I need those passes. You, you, you can say linear populate, and you have this control function with which you can actually control in which cases I want to do a fusion, which case I don't want to do a fusion. But then you step back and say, OK, uh, you've got, got all these bells and whistles and MLIR and all these facilities. How do I write a great fusion algorithm in general? So the goal is like improve locality, et cetera, great. And then you have this free ticket, like, you know, okay, as it is in most for compiler optimization problems, uh, maximizing data locality by fusion is NP hard, which means you can't really aspire for a perfect algorithm, but then you, there are some better ones than other ones. So you, you go read a bunch of papers and you say, okay, it starts with a greedy algorithm and you have a cost function. One way is like, you know, okay, you just, I have producer consumer, you grow it, uh, you have a set of something called partitions, and you say, okay, I'm going to divide the graph, some use a min cut, etc. You come up with some kind of algorithm that works good for your application. Now let's apply this really to a sort of pseudo real application. So attention all is all you need was a research paper by Google. It's considered a founding document for AI, modern AI, and the main architecture of LLMs. What it does is it has this query key value 
these are matrices. And the operation it's doing is a matrix multiply of Q and K. K. Then there's some scaling and all masking, a dropout, and there's a softmax. The softmax is really this here, it's e to the power of x minus x, yeah, can x minus max. So basically every row, so I've got it here. So for every row, it finds the max value and wants to do an element-wise subtraction from it. What, what you see here, the, I've just written it for this example, the tension in using linear generic ops. And firstly, we'll see like what, what existing things already happen. So here it's like, okay, it, because of this QKT, it does uh, transpose matrix multiply, and then it wants to do a max, this max here, because it's going to do row wise, you need a filled vector, so a, a, a sort of column vector, let's see. And then it does a reduction, then it needs to do a broadcast because it wants to do the subtraction. So it has a broadcast. And then it has got this ex exponent because it's doing this e to the power of x minus max. You got all this set of linear op for this. This is, yeah, sort of pseudocode for the uh, attention. Let's try to play around with this and say LMLIR opt uh, linear generates that you need to run this generalized so that because otherwise it will not, it will keep the name ops as it is and will not do fusion. And you can see that the transpose is fused here because you can see like, instead of I, K, you know, matrix multiply I, K, K, J, but he's, here it's a J, K still. Uh, so it has just a transpose. What about the broadcast that's also folded in? For this one, I had to write my own pass, but okay. I like, you know, use the MLIR general passes, but I have my own set. And what about the rest, like, so the uh, subtract, exponent, et cetera. Yeah, they also get folded in. And in this case, if you have, so you had, in this case, a producer and two consumers, and what it does is, is recomputation. You can see here that's doing a subtract. So what it's doing here is doing the denominator first, so does a subtraction, exponent, then addition, and then later it has those adds, right? So it does the division. Where it's doing a recomputation. Is this sufficient? What do we want? More patterns. What do you, when do we want it? Now. Well, it's not about really more patterns. Because here, if you see the main problem with this is if your row is very long, it doesn't fit into your local memory, and you're trying to do this reduction, and existing fusion tiling approaches will not work. And it was like this for a while, and I think many people have now heard about it. Flash attention paper came around was two years, three years ago, which solved this problem using what's called algebraic reassociation. So here, I'll try to explain a little bit here. So what happens is you want to compute the max of the whole row, but the row is very long. So you take one chunk of it, you compute, you say, okay, this is, this is the full thing. I'm going to compute this e to the power of max of this particular one. And then, because the way the multiplication of exponents work, they, do can, they become the exponents in, can cancel out, you can fix it. So what flash attention does is takes a chunk, computes partial result, carries on to the next, and when, like, so in this case, I'm just showing a small part, I'm showing like, Compute the max here. When you come to the next one, you have not the max of just the blue part, but also the blue and the red and the green. It does a correction for it, and then proceeds on. It, it, does, it does not just that, but it also needs to compute the output, right? So if you go here all the way. So what it's doing is it's collapsing all of them together. So it's soft max and the output P times V and it fixes the results as it progresses along. So in the end, when it has traversed all the way, it's done all these small blocks, at the end it has the, all the right results. Okay, so in our countries, what does it mean? For co we are all compiler people. So the idea is what can we learn from this that we can make as 
compiler pass that takes pushes the edge a bit forward in terms of like so that every time a new version, a slight deviation of flash attention comes along, we, the compiler can maybe do something better than it can do today. Uh, so this is just showing like you know if you use flash attention, you still have a small block here, and in that you have the fusion, etc. But if just relying on the run of the mill, so to say, passes of tiling and fusion, this would not solve the real big problem. You would still be running to memory and uh, to, to shared memory and main memory. But overall, I would say, yeah, fusion is, uh, works well. And I've kept these discussions to just limiting to fusion. I know there could be questions about what about tiling, what about other things, and what's the best answer, what's the best way to do it. I mean, that's really like MLI doesn't provide those answers. Those are like, you know, for ERI, you can say, OK, how are you going to do it, you, 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 depending on your applications, et cetera. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the talk.